What's up, guys? It's your girl, Matt Cox, with M.A. Couture Crafting. And yes, I had the opportunity to meet Rachel Clark in person. So Rachel Clark is an amazing quilter and fashion designer, and she's kind of mixed the two. She makes these amazing coats. And I was able to catch her lecture not once but twice. And I'm glad that I did because you get different stuff in the lectures. I got a chance to meet her and um, hang out for a few minutes. And I absolutely loved everything about this. Now, I am scared of garment sewing. <laughs> I know that quilt coats are all the rage. I know that the only way that I'm going to get a true quilt coat is to make it. I just haven't seen any made that were one affordable and two that, you know, that I like. Nobody's making Tula jackets that they're giving away. They're making them for themselves, but they're not selling them. Um, yeah, there are a couple of people that will make one for you, but I think there's just going to be something amazing when I finally get the courage to make my own. Rachel does themed jackets. She does color themed jackets. They are, you know, based on all different kinds of things. The colors are so vibrant. Um, and it's nice to see an artist up close and personal and talking about their own items. There's nothing like it. She just was going through the process of how she picks her colors, which is a lot like how I pick my colors, which is probably why she, I resonated so well and what she was saying resonated so well with me. Because I was like, that's exactly what I do. That's exactly how I move. You know, a lot of it was, that's what I would have put that too. I had the time of my life in that lecture. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I also enjoyed listening to people talk about her coats as they were walking by. People just don't get it. Some people don't have the courage to wear these coats. Me, I'm like, yeah, I'd wear that to the grocery store. It's not even a big deal. But I'm also the one that wears all the colors and these big bows on her head all the time too. So take that with a grain of salt, but I just love the conversations about them. She has an amazing statement piece um, that's a cape that is just looks like it would drape the ground. One of the cool things about her, her lecture, though, is that she likes to see people in her coat. She didn't care who you are. Put it on, take pictures in it, model it. She really enjoys that, and that's something new. Who wants you touching their stuff? Like, that's something I had never seen somebody say, what? Put it on, touch it. She's passing the coats around the class. She wants you to get up and on it because she realizes that these coats are just, they're going to grab you. They are attention getting. She was talking about how she could be in the airport and quilters will just come up and start pulling on your stuff and touching you and looking <laughs> and examining and she's cool with that she's like look I get it she says if you wear one of these coats you're going to catch the eye of the people for sure and there's no doubt about it because there is just something so amazingly whimsical and sophisticated about these coats all different kinds of shapes and silhouettes and sizes and they're just amazing and I actually had a good time watching people try them on and pose with them and they're just amazing works of art that she wears. She uses her stuff. So maybe I will get up the courage to attempt to try to make a coat, maybe. Um, I like the fact that they really are like smaller versions of quilts and they're not, I don't know. I don't know what it takes to make a coat because again, I'm not a garment sewer, but these coats will make you want to try. They'll make you want to come up with a theme and try um, something different. Also, I got a chance to see what cherry wood fabrics look like when they're used properly. Oh my goodness. Just wait till you guys see my haul because I might have gone cherry wood crazy. And I get it. I get it. I get why people like cherry wood now. And I miss that whole moment. I don't know. If you guys saw my retreat video, I had no idea how amazing cherry wood was until I got a chance to see them in these coats. And then I just became obsessed. Cherry wood are fabrics that look like suede, but are cotton, the way that they're dyed. And it's just the way that Rachel used them in some of her coats just made you want to stand there and pet them. Even though it's not suede, you just want to keep touching it. So if you'd like to see what her coats and the exhibit look like, I will be sure to link the video. Next, um, I was debating how I was going to do this, if we were going to watch it together. But I think I'm going to go on ahead and do it like I always do with the voiceover, even though I would love to go through it with you guys, but maybe another time. All right. If you'd like to see what the exhibit looks like, keep watching. Bye-bye. 
So let's start here in this corner. And I think this one, I guess that one kind of has a floral look about it. It does, it has some flowers. And there is the polka dot jacket, which is just a collection of polka dots. And she made an entire jacket out of polka dots. And of course we can spot the Tula and the Kaif polka dots for sure, but she mixed all different types of brands. Really love that gray coat. Um, I like the colors that she uses. They really pop out. Then there is, I think that jacket is called the Watermelon Man, the other one. Then we have some fish here. I don't remember the, remember the names of all these jackets. I mean, there's just too many coats here to, to remember, but they are stunning. Black on black, absolutely here for it. Love the use of buttons, have no idea where she finds these amazing buttons. Then we have some African fabrics that are mixed and it, they're just, they're all so different. <laughs> they're all so bright, they're all so vivacious. It is no surprise that I'm wearing my watermelon bow because I love watermelon and the minute that I saw all those watermelon jackets, I just almost hit the roof, I was so excited. Here we have some animals. There's another one that I'll show you guys later on with some animals that's just amazing to me. Teacher, lecturer, long sewer line. Wow, I wish that I had come from people who were just sewing and sewing and sewing and passing it down because maybe I wouldn't be scared to make a garment. Look at the buttons on this. I love the length of them too. I know I'm in LA, but I wouldn't mind being seen in a duster. <laughs> we have a blazer there. I love that it's askew. I love the block that she used on the left. This is also a great way to test your blocks. This is my, I think this is my favorite. No, yeah, yeah, I think this one is my favorite. I think it is absolutely stunning. There's no guessing about the theme. You can tell that it's a watermelon. You can see the seeds. Oh, oh, I wish I got a chance to try that one on because that is me all day long. Another watermelon style jacket. She probably has enough watermelon pieces to do its own <laughs> exhibit, do, <laughs> do its own. This right here, if this one isn't my favorite, it's up there, right there with the watermelon. This is the cape that looks like it would just drag the ground as you walked. And unfortunately, the white glove wasn't there to open that up so that we can see the hand dyed fabrics on the inside, but the fabrics on the inside are amazing. I love that the insides of these coats are also finished um, quilted because you guys know how I am about the backs of my quilts. This would be just like that. When you open them up, they are an absolute surprise. Now I saw that fabric and all I wanted to do was make a mason jar <laughs> quilt. Look what she did with them. Love the blues on the top. Is this the coffee quilt? This is awesome. Totally, not a coffee quilt, the coffee coat. Totally themed with coffee. Boy, I hope that I, I can get up enough courage to make a coat because they make you want to make a coat, right? This one is a little bit more simple just nice and blocked. I say it's simple from somebody who knows nothing about garment. That could be the most challenging one to assemble. Who knows? Love these grays right here. I wish I could have left the volume on so you guys could have heard the talking, but that would have just been bad. It would have been inappropriate. I mean, they weren't saying anything bad, but the conversations that these coats evoke are just interesting, just interesting to hear. Love the length of that coat and the use of black and white there. Now I'm gonna show you guys some pictures that were happening in the lecture. This is her talking about one of the coats. She brings the coats. Again, you can try them on, you can touch them. This is one of the more subdued ones in my opinion. She, yes, she made a Halloween coat and it is gorgeous. <laughs> There's a polka dot one and this she's showing us how she blocks out her stuff and plans for it. We've got another animal coat. This is my favorite animal coat. That's the inside. And there's the use of cherry wood fabrics on the outside looking like suede. Love how she used different braided fabrics, the different braided blocks to tell a story in that coat. 
Look at the buttons here. Oh, they gradiate. You know I'm about a gradiation. This is the inside of it, but wait till you see the back. It's coming. What? It's a dragon panel. Oh, look at the triangle blocks that go down the sides. This is my favorite coat. This is, yes, this one is my favorite coat. Not the watermelon coat, but this one here. Several people gave her the same fabric because they thought it looked like her. And so she figured she better do something with it. And boy, did she. And here we all are posed together. Rachel is in the green looking fabulous. If you guys haven't done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye-bye. Oh,